All right, let's talk low profile keyboards. So basically around July of 2021, I was looking for a new keyboard. My Logitech G810, uh, I think is what it was called, um, was it bit the dust, the control key had broken off. And honestly, I was just kind of done with the thing. I never really enjoyed the keyboard that much in Logitech's um, Romer G switch. Uh, but it was my first, you know, gamerish keyboard. It had the RGB, it had the software, um, and it got me, you know, kind of into mechanical keyboards, I guess. Or, or it was my, you know, first keyboard into the 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 PC gaming world. Um, before that, I just had some Logitech like membrane keyboard. After that happened, I was like, okay, what do I like in a keyboard actually? So uh, to be honest with you, I love those MacBook keyboards, uh, not the butterfly switch ones, but you know, the, the MacBook keyboards that we know and love the specifically, you know, on the MacBook pros, the 2015, 2012 ones. I know that it's back, you know, for the, the newer model models as well, but specifically that 2012 one, it, it was just a bit higher up and the travel was a bit longer and it was a very satisfying tactile press. So I was like, okay, can I get, you know, that kind of as a mechanical keyboard, as low profile, can I have the best of both worlds? So I started researching and there wasn't many good options out there uh, at the time. Corsair had one that was released and I'm not quite sure if Logitech had released their G915 uh, yet, um, but I ended up coming across Keychron. Uh, specifically their gray keys with the one orange key style. I remember seeing that in some review before. So I was like, oh, they have a series of low profile keyboards that uh, I, from what I had seen from them before, it was just kind of typical mechanical keyboards. Um, and so I saw the K1, which is the 10 keyless keyboard that they have. Um, and the reviews that I saw, it specifically what concerned me was the key wobble, but otherwise it was really cool. Well, then I came across the K3, um, and that one apparently had its own switch. It was their own switch that Keychron had developed that was uh, had a larger footprint, so there was less key wobble. So I ended up picking up the keyboard. I've had this keyboard for... Uh, a while now, definitely enough, you have used it enough to review it. Um, and I ended up getting the uh, brown switch with no RGB. I just got the white backlight because um, to be honest with you, from what I've seen of the reviews, uh, the RGB is not great. It's just kind of more there for like, if you really want it, you can kind of do it, but it's, it's the colors are very washed out. Um, it's not really, it's not really meant to be an RGB keyboard. I just, so I just got the white backlight uh, because it still has a ton of different effects. Um, like uh, there's a really cool matrix one right now. I just have uh, when you press the key, it uh, it fades away for a second and then the light comes back. It's not something that you'd really notice, but I just like how subtle it is. But if we wanna, I definitely wanna show you guys that kind of matrix code looking one. Yeah, so you have some raining code there. I, I I always love seeing that on the keyboards. I think it's a cool effect. But uh, yeah, I usually just keep it on uh, the more subtle effects. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I've enjoyed the keyboard so far. This is the version two of the keyboard when I was getting it originally. Uh, there was a lot of com uh, complaints it seemed with version one and version two had just come out. And I wanted to do a review on this basically immediately to capitalize on that, but uh, uh, that didn't happen. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's, uh, the version two, the deck flex is basically gone. I think they changed the, the frame, uh, to be, uh, a better, uh, I'm not sure if it's an aluminum frame, but basically a, a tougher material. Um, and then there was complaints about the, uh, the feet from before. Now they have like the rubber tips. There's different steps of adjustment. I never used the the propping up of the keyboard, I always just have them flat. So, uh, but yeah, it has Bluetooth. It has direct connection um, uh, as well. I use, I have it directly connected to my my uh, PC at all times. 
uh, USB type C so you can use any cord that you want it does come with a cord so that's you know of, of course you could use that obviously um, and uh, yeah it has switches also to uh, switch between Windows and Mac OS and also iOS and Android if you want to connect it to your uh, phone so uh, yeah it's a it's a really cool you know looking keyboard I, I having the low profile switches are is cool so how do I feel about it after using it for a year and like five ish months so I feel like it was a big learning curve um, especially you know just like with a typical mechanical keyboard you kind of have that familiarity with the layout um, and the keys are a lot closer together on this keyboard um, so trying to teach my hands to press keys that are that I like the farther fingers that are were usually farther out basically I, I actually for a while wasn't like using my farther the like my my pinky finger or my like ring finger as much any anymore I was kind of ending up using the pointer um, like in the index finger and the middle finger like uh, the most uh, which was kind of weird um, so I, I kind of retrained myself to try to use more fingers because that's what you're supposed to do or whatever um, and that's kind of been my biggest uh, like hang up with it um, it because like obviously you don't want to you know lose productivity you want to get this new thing and you want it to to be just as good with it as you were with the last one because you know I use it, this for work I need to be able to to do things as fast as it was doing it before um, so that's been my only issue otherwise uh, the only other thing that I, I feel like is you know not great is the switches are just okay uh, the brown, you know, browns are supposed to be more tactile. I at least that is what uh, my understanding is. Um, and I mean, it's pretty linear. Like the tactile bump is, you know, a, a, like you feel it. But um, like, you know, going back to the the 2012 MacBooks earlier, like it isn't as tactile as that. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't feel like that. It's it's pretty linear. Um, I'm I'm not really a fan of the clicky switches as much, so I feel like uh, like I guess I could have you know I feel like Browns probably were still the best choice for me there. I guess I could have gotten a red, but th I feel like there's not much of a difference. Is, I guess is what I'm saying, uh, at least with Keychron's versions of the switches. I'm sure the Gateron switches are a bit more distinct uh, as Gateron is in many different keyboards. Also, when it comes to the durability of the keyboard, um, basically, I, you know, from what I, some stuff I saw is like, people were saying they, you know, the keys kind of wear away easily, they get stained easily. Yes, they do. I, I, it depends, you know, on your kind of, your habits, right? I'm someone who cleans their keyboard relatively frequently. Uh, and by clean, I don't take all the keys off and like go in with like a cotton swab. I just... I just take a, a towel, get a, a, a little bit of water on it. I don't even use like a cleaner uh, because it just doesn't really, it kind of leaves streaks. Um, and I just I just go across the keyboard um, and then I take the, I, the dry part of the towel and, and I just go over it and it cleans it off. I, 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 the oil just go away usually. I don't, I don't know why that works so well for me, uh, but for this keyboard it does. Um, and then I just use a, um, uh, air can uh, uh, air spray to just spray out the dust uh, within the keys and it's really easy since the uh, switches are are propped up it's not there's they're not in like housings around it so it's pretty easy to spray the dust out of there um, but yeah their durability wise like I, I I haven't had any issues with it I'm pretty satisfied with it so far I can't really speak to the battery because, like I said, I always just keep it plugged in. Um, I, uh, from what I've seen, the Bluetooth is a little, it's, you know, it's not the, the most amazing Bluetooth on this. Uh, there, there's only a certain amount of key rollover and sometimes people have reported like delays, which is not great, especially if you're playing games. So I never use the Bluetooth. Um, I just have it always hardwired in. Now, 
Uh, basically, it's taken me so long to make this video that uh, there's other choices out there now. Going back to the Keychron K1, uh, it has their own switches in it now. So I actually probably will be getting the K1 and trying that out because the keys are a bit farther apart and uh, the a bit that you know and that might be a bit easier to type on and you know having those arrow keys separated it just will be a bit better for muscle memory at least for me um, so that's good that they have their version of the switches now on the k1 um, because yeah before like uh, it was just the gaterons and from like I said in the reviews that I saw there was a lot of key wobble um, and there's also new choices kind of popping up on the scene, you know, the new Logitech keyboards getting, you know, a bit more discounted uh, to be a bit more of a reasonable price. Razer just brought back the, the Death Stalker as a V2 with actual uh, mechanical switches in it now, which is pretty cool. I Because I, I, I remember, you know, uh, considering the Death Stalker, uh, even though it was membrane switches back, you know, when it was an actual thing you could buy from them, uh, it, which was, a, you know, it was their only low profile keyboard. Um, but the new one only has linear and clicky switches. So no brown equivalent, I guess. Uh, so that's uh, not great for me, but I don't know. I might go that route as uh, well. Or I might take a look at Keychron's other offerings. Uh, basically, the goal to find the perfect low-profile keyboard, I feel like, still is continues um, for us low-profile keyboard enthusiasts out there. Um, this is a really cool keyboard, uh, especially for the price. Like I, uh, basically, I ended up. I think I paid eighty dollars for this right now on their site. Uh, I believe it's uh, ninety dollars. But, um, you know, there's sales right now on Amazon. It's $80, around $80. So it, the price fluctuates. I wouldn't, I, uh, I feel like $80 was a uh, really great price for this 90, pushing it just a little bit. Uh, but yeah, there's not much more I have to say about this. Um, I just wanted to talk about this keyboard um, and just kind of talk about low profile keyboards in general. Um, if I end up getting a new one in the, the future to, to test out, I'll try to make a video about that as well. But, uh, yep, I've been Jake from Veli, and I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys in the next one.